Bones of the skull, an overview. Here is the anterior and lateral view of the human skull, let's look at some important definitions. The term skull refers to all the bones including the mandible, while the cranium refers to the skull without the mandible. But often we see that these anatomical definitions are not always observed. The calvaria is known as the vault or skull cap. This is the upper portion or the roof of the skull that encloses the brain. The skull has 22 bones and can be divided into two groups. The group of bones that encloses the brain is called the neurocranium and comprises eight bones. Two paired bones, the parietal bone and the temporal bone. And four unpaired bones. The sphenoid bone, frontal bone, ethmoid bone and the occipital bone. All bones fuse together to form the neurocranium and acts as a protective vault for the brain. Let's make a transverse section through the skull to expose the brain to see its exact resting position. Here is the calvaria, removed and here is the brain in situ. Inside the auditory meatus and within the petrous part of each temporal bone are the three auditory ossicles. They are the malleus, incus and the stapes. Known to be the smallest bones in the body. Although they do not participate in the structural integrity of the skull. They do play a vital role in the transmission and amplification of sound. We will look at these bones in another tutorial. The other group of bones of the skull forms the visceracranium or the facial skeleton. They comprise 14 bones, 6 paired bones which include the nasal bone, the lacrimal bone, maxilla, zygomatic bone, inferior nasal conchi, palatine bone, as well as the unpaired mandible, and vomer. First, let's look at the bones that make up the neurocranium. Here's the frontal bone. Located at the antero-superior portion of the skull, it forms the forehead. Some of its important features include the squama frontalis, this is the squamous part that forms the cranial cavity. The glabella is a flat depression between the brow line. The supraorbital notch, sometimes presents as a foramen. Containing the supraorbital nerve. The supraorbital margin forms the upper boundary of the orbit. And the zygomatic process, this extension of the frontal bone articulates with the zygomatic bone of the facial skeleton. The parietal bone. This is a paired bone that forms the sides and roof of the cranium. Features include the sagittal or superior border. Both parietal bones fuse together to form a fibrous joint called the sagittal suture. Anteriorly, the frontal or anterior border, this fuses with the frontal bone to form the coronal suture. Posteriorly, is the occipital or posterior border, here, it fuses with the occipital bone to form the lamboid suture. The superior and inferior temporal lines, seen along the lateral surface of the cranium, is the origin of the temporalis muscle. Here is the squamous border. Here both parietal and temporal bones meet to form the squamosal suture. Inferiorly is the mastoid angle. Here is the temporal bone. This is a paired bone, it lies inferiorly to the parietal bone. The temporal bone has a flat compact squamous part, which also helps to form the cranial cavity. A zygomatic process which is of arched bony projection from the lower aspect of the squamous part. Here is the external acoustic meatus also called the auditory meatus or ear canal. Here's the mastoid process. A site for the attachment of the occipitofrontalis and the sternocleidomastoid muscles of the neck. Finally another important structure is the styloid process, this is a bony projection, and is the attachment site for the stylohyoid, ligament and muscle. The occipital bone is located at the back of the skull, it forms the part of the cranial cavity known as the posterior cranial fossa. On the lateral view, the external occipital protuberance and the superior and inferior nuchal lines are observed. Let's look at the posterior view of the bone to identify some of its key features. Here is the supreme or high nuchal line. This is the external occipital protuberance. It is located at the level of the superior nuchal line. Below is the inferior nuchal line. The nuchal lines in general are the attachment sites for many muscles of the neck and back. The foramen magnum. The foramen magnum is an important landmark because it is a transition zone between the skull and the spine. The hypoglossal canal is the foramen through which the twelfth cranial nerve, the hypoglossal nerve, exits the skull. The occipital condyles articulate with the superior articular facets of the first cervical vertebra. The atlas, C1, forming the atlantic occipital joint. The sphenoid bone. The sphenoid bone is an unpaired irregular bone that forms part of the base of the skull. It makes up the posterior wall of the orbit. Here are some of its important features. This is the lesser wing, the greater wing, and between both is the superior orbital fissure. Passing through this fissure is the V1 ophthalmic branch of the trigeminal nerve, the oculometer nerve, the trochlear nerve, and the superior and inferior ophthalmic veins. Let's look at the sphenoid bone from another perspective, 
Here is a diagram of the sphenoid bone embedded in the base of the skull. The isolated sphenoid bone looks somewhat like a butterfly. Here's the greater wing. This structure has three important foramina. These are the foramen rotundum, the foramen oval, and the foramen spinosum. Centrally located in the body of the sphenoid bone. Here is the cella tersica, a depression in the bone where the pituitary gland sits. Superiorly is the lesser wing, the optic canal passes through this part and is occupied by the second cranial nerve, the optic nerve. As previously discussed, the space between the lesser and greater wing is the superior orbital fissure. Inferior to the body is the pterygoid process. With its two parts, the medial and lateral pterygoid plates. The perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone is the only part that can be seen on the anterior skull. In this diagram, the nasal bone and frontal processes of the maxilla were removed to better illustrate its anatomical position. The ethmoid bone is a small unpaired bone, located in the midline of the anterior cranium. This is what it looks like in the base of the skull. Seen here are the crista galli and the cribriform plate. This diagram of the sagittal section of the nasal cavity reveals some of its important internal features, including the crista galli. This upper portion of the perpendicular plate facilitates the attachment of the dura mater of the brain, ultimately securing the brain to the cranial cavity. The cribriform plate. Located in the base of the skull, the cribriform plate is the horizontal plate of many small apertures that separates the cranial cavity from the nasal cavity. It facilitates the passage of the nerve fibers from the first cranial nerve to enter the nasal cavity. The superior and middle nasal conchi, and finally the perpendicular plate, this thin bone extends inferiorly from the roof of the nasal cavity to meet with the vomer to form the nasal septum. Pause the video to see the parts of the isolated ethmoid bone. Let's look at the bones that make up the visceracranium. The facial skeleton. First is the nasal bone. This is a small, flat, paired bone, located medially to the frontal processes of the maxillae. They articulated the internasal suture to form the nose bridge. The lacrimal bone. This is a small, paired bone located in the medial wall of the orbit. The inferior nasal concha. Also called the turbinated or curled bone, is one of the three paired nasal conchi in the nose with the other two, the superior and middle nasal conchi, belonging to the ethmoid bone. This is the zygomatic bone also called the cheekbone or malar bone. This is its frontal process that articulates superiorly with the frontal bone. Its orbital border forms the lateral border of the orbit. An important landmark to remember is the zygomatico-facial foramen. The zygomatico-facial nerve and artery exit through the foramen to innervate the face. The vomer is a small, midline bone that occupies and divides the nasal cavity. Here is a sagittal section of the nasal cavity showing the anatomical position of the vomer. The maxilla, an important bone of the face, is a paired, irregularly shaped bone. The frontal process articulates with the frontal bone. Here is the infraorbital foramen where the infraorbital branch of the maxillary nerve and the V2 division of the fifth cranial nerve exit the skull. The two halves fuse together at the midline of the skull to form the intermaxillary suture. Let's look at the palatine bone. It is closely related to the maxillae. Here is a diagram showing an inferior view of the skull. Here is the palatine process of the maxilla and the horizontal plate of the palatine bone. These two bones form the hard palate, which acts as the floor of the nose and the roof of the mouth. The mandible. The mandible is the largest bone in the human skull. It assists in mastication and forms the lower jawline. The mandible is comprised of an anterior portion called the body and a posterior portion called the ramus. This diagram shows a detailed anterolateral view of the bone. Here is the body and posteriorly is the ramus. On the ramus. The coronoid process acts as the site of insertion for the temporalis and masseter muscles. Another important feature is the mandibular condyle, which articulates with the mandibular fossa on the inferior aspect of the temporal bone to form the temporomandibular joint. The mental foramen is a bilateral opening in the anterior portion of the mandible, where the mental nerve, a branch of the fifth cranial nerve, the trigeminal nerve, exits. The superior surface of the body holds the teeth into place. Comparably, the mental, infraorbital, and supraorbital foramina all lie on the same perpendicular plane. Here's an overview of the configuration of the cranial bones in the base of the skull. Anteriorly is the frontal bone. Within the frontal bone is the cribriform plate and crista galli of the ethmoid bone. Here's the butterfly-shaped sphenoid bone.
The paired temporal bones laterally are the paired parietal bones and posteriorly is the occipital bone. Watch our tutorial on the cranial fossae, landmarks, and foramina. Make learning anatomy fun and interactive. Adopt coloring into your study strategy and get these unique anatomical diagrams to color and label in our bones coloring book. Check the link in the description for more details. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe for more tutorials, it will help us to make more videos like these. Think you know anatomy? Challenge yourself and take this anatomy quiz and let us know your score in the comments. Thanks for watching.